So now before we go through actually creating the slideshow, let's make sure this is attached to the correct view. So here under attachment settings, we're going to click this not defined next to attach to. Now these are our two displays that we can attach to. The master is the baseline defaults for the view. We're really never going to attach to this. So page is the one that we want. I'll check that and click apply and the attachment position will be before it will display before the other view display. By default, it's set to inherit the contextual filters. In this case, we don't have any, but if we decided to add some, then it would cascade into this attachment as well. And we can also inherit exposed filters. Again, we don't have any, but we would simply set this to yes if we wanted to share that form where the end user gets to filter out the content to apply to both displays. Okay, so if we scroll down and look at the preview, we see something very similar to what our original blog display shows like. That's because this has inherited everything from our default view, which is the page. And so everything that we see in the fields, in our filter criteria, everything is getting pulled into this view display as well. So we'll need to override this. So the next thing that we're going to do is change the format to be a slideshow instead of an unformatted list. So I'll check unformatted list. Now, before we change anything here, it's important to understand that at this point, we now have two views displays that are sharing the same defaults. So we need to make sure that we're going to apply this just to this attachment. So we're clicking that, which will set this to override. When we set that, it also changes the text of this button down here. Now it says apply this display instead of, if we selected all displays, apply all displays. I'm going to go back to select this attachment. And so before you click this button from here on out, it's important to think about where you're applying the settings. Now the approach we've taken up until this point has been to create a view for every individual view display. So we don't have to worry about overriding defaults at all. This is the first time we really have to think about it. So we'll just make sure whenever we see an overlay and are about to submit the form that we check to make sure this reads apply this display. Okay, so the format we want to use is slideshow. So we'll check that and then I'll click apply this display. And now we have a slew of options. When we look at our slideshow, I'm going to jump back over to our wireframe. There's actually three different parts to this. The first is the display of the node itself which is this title and this large image. The second part is the pager. And the pager, in this case, displays a set of thumbnails for the different items that can roll through this slideshow. Okay, so we have the node display, we have the pager display, and then we have the controls. And that's what this back arrow and next arrow are. So this is just something to keep in mind as we look through the settings that we're gonna need to adjust settings for all three of these things. The actual node display will modify through the fields settings. The pager display will actually need to use a hidden field for so we can pull it into the pager settings for view slideshow. And then the controls are simply something we can turn on and off, but then we'll need to adjust how they look because by default, they're just plain text controls. And they also include a pause control that we need to hide. So we're going to adjust these forward and back buttons using some basic CSS, nothing too overwhelming there, but the settings themselves are going to be found where we're at right now. If we go back to the browser inside of the style options for this particular format, 